What up, what up, what up? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning to you. February 8th, man, what a day in history. It is my brother's birthday. He is older than me. He will be 48 today. He is 48 today. <clears throat> so his birthday, you know, we'll go see him a little bit later. And... um so driving to work today, man, and every time my brother's birthday comes around for the last 24 years, I remember it for his birthday, but I also remember it for the day that I joined the United States Navy. It was on this night, on the night of February 8th in 2000, I go to a hotel in Tampa, Florida. <laughs> and I uh, I did. I went, uh, went to the MEPS processing station and then they put me in a hotel overnight and the next day I got on a plane and I went to boot camp. So you could say February 9th was my actual enlistment day, but February 8th was the day that I had to hug everybody and say goodbye. So to me, that's the day it all started, right? Yeah, 24 years ago today. 2-4. That's wild, man. Time goes by so fast. It goes by so fast, man. There's some days where I'm still like, dude, I'm 44? Come on. Get out of here. Sometimes I still feel like, how? How am I 44? How do I have a 23-year-old daughter? How do I have an 18 year old son. What is happening in this fast forward <clears throat> of my world? I feel like some days in the sun where we're at in our solar system right now, every day at 8, 15 is gonna be right in my eyes. But man, I feel like sometimes I wake up and someone has hit a fast forward button on my DVD of life. You know, because I remember things like in phases, like little pockets of memories from parts of my life, but not every single thing. So it's like, okay, I was here, brrr, now I'm here, brrr, now I'm here. You know, and all those moments, all those moments that you're in right now, it's so hard to just capture what you're actually in in your life, the history that you're making before somebody hits the brrr, fast forward button. 24 years ago today, I decided, you know, for the second, third major time in my life that where I was at in my life was not where I wanted to be. You know, the first time was when I was in high school, when I was sitting in high school in my sophomore year and I decided that high school was no longer where I wanted to be so I dropped out. Just left high school in April of my 10th grade year and said, no, that's that's enough for me. I can't I can't do this every day. I got to go to work. I got to I got to start doing something. I've reached the pinnacle of what I need to absorb at that moment in my life in school and I left high school and I made that decision. My mom allowed me to and signed all the paperwork and, and, you know, it was about three months later I got and made the second major decision to grow and change and sacrifice in my life and I went to a program called Job Corps, right? And I went to Earl C. Clements Job Corps Center at 16 years old and, you know, that was a whole new world. This was filled of... 13, well, not 13, but 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 24 year old men and women, you know, that came from all different times of life. This was really the first time that I've been all over the place and, and people did not like you there. So anyways, I was there for a few weeks and I got my GED and I entered, this is the first time I really, you know, I worked in fast food, but I entered their culinary program because they it was it was a technical school to help you get a GED and build a trade. And it's a, there we go. Love the internet until you don't. Little disruption there. So you know, so I was in Job Corps, man. So I took a culinary program and I was there about eleven months, living in a dorm room and 
you know, just going back and forth to class and this is where I learned kind of how to cook and what food was and how a restaurant kind of worked and how things, you know, it was the first real thing that sparked my interest and I was 16 years old, you know, and then I got out of Job Corps, I graduated, came home. I graduated and came home and when I came home, I came home to disruption, right? My, my life from zero to probably today was, was disruption. You know, but really until I was probably in my mid-20s, 30s, when I decided to slow down a little bit, it was all disruption. All disruption. Very little calmness in the water growing up, you know. So anyways, finish Job Corps, come home, 17, 18, 19, I'm hanging out, I'm working two jobs, Ruby Tuesday. You know, I was at Ruby Tuesdays for two and a half years. You know, that's where I had a good, it's my first real good mentor in a work center, a guy named Bob. Bob taught me everything that I still use in restaurants today, right? He, I mean, I spent two years working with this guy and he taught you everything you should do and everything you shouldn't, you know? So here we are, 19 years old, man. How the heck did I get into the United States Navy? Well, truth be told, you know, I tried to join the Army a year before and it didn't work out for whatever reason. And so I had a good ASVAB, I had a good physical. I'm sitting at my mom's kitchen table. You know, I'm like, dude, there's gotta be more than just working at Ruby Tuesdays and learning from Bob. Bob's a nice guy, but there's gotta be more. I'm 19 years old, I'm in the, I'm in the pinnacle of my youth and energy. So I thought my energy has not stopped since. Um, but so I'm in, I'm in the, the, the plateau of like, dude, I need to spread my wings and fly, you know? So I'm sitting at mom's table and there's a newspaper there and then, you know, it says hiring firefighter. I'm like, okay, firefighter, I can fight fires, you know? And, um, the guy answers the phone, USA Navy. And I said, uh, he goes, how can I help you? I said, okay, big dog, how can you help me? I mean, it's exactly what I said. I said, man, I don't know, how can you help me? And then they start with the questionnaire. Well, how old are you? How are you this? How are you that? You know, have you ever been to a recruiting station before? And I told him I had a good ASVAB and good physical. And, you know, he immediately got me with the recruiter, a guy named NC1 Whitfield at the time, who's now Master Chief Whitfield. And, uh, you know, within a week, this was the end of December, 1999. And within a week, I was at the recruiter's, uh, well, within an hour, I was at the recruiter's office. And within a week, I was at MEPS. And boom, man, at the end of December, I'm gonna party like it's 1999, you know, going into the new millennium. The world was supposed to fall apart anyway, right? So I signed a contract, man, and that was it. I got on the plane, you know, um, and it was just about 45 days later on February 8th of 2000. Man, I didn't have a freaking clue on what I was doing. I came home that December night and I sat my mama out on the back porch of her apartment. I can remember it. And I said, mama, you need to sit down. Oh my God, what's going on? You don't ever tell me to sit down, girl. You need to sit down. <laughs> and uh, yeah. So I told her, I'm like, man, I'm, I've joined the United States Navy. I've signed a contract and I'm getting on the bus, you know? So I did, I got on the bus, went to MEPS, got on the plane, went to Chicago, got on the bus, went to Great Lakes. And man, I'll tell you what, that was where I was supposed to be at that point in time in my life. Ain't no doubt about that, right? A 19-year-old kid with a GED and a technical degree in culinary school enters the United States Navy at 20 years old. And, uh, man, it was good. You know, I had the technical degree and the GED, so I already went in as an E3, you know. And, you know, but, but I had to sacrifice leaving everything I knew. I wanted to level up. I wanted to get better. I wanted to move forward. I wanted to have something different than everybody before me. So you have to sacrifice to level up. 
you have to give up what you are comfortable in. Family, I love you. Sunday dinners, going to church with everybody, seeing everybody, the arguments, the fights, the bull that you don't want to go through, that you're trying to escape, but then you still have to give up the good days, the love, the hugs, the Christmases, the birthdays, the Thanksgivings, the, you know, the holidays, the good days, the songs, the cheer, all of the things that you want to be there for, but if you stay there and you're there for that, then you stay the same just like everybody else. So how do you do that? You got to give up. You got to sacrifice. You got to move on. You got to move forward. You got to say, all right, still love you. I'm still going to see you. Hey, girl, call me. But I've got to sacrifice in order to level up, right? So now, now I'm in the Navy. You know, I'm an E3 standing in boot camp, left, right, left, keep it in step. Holy cow. Dude, I loved it. I got to be honest with you. Like for me... You know, a high-powered guy, a, a mentally got to move, got to stay focused, got to go, go, go guy for me, man, it was great. It was great. Short study sessions, 30 minutes, right? Okay, on to the next thing. Go, 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 go all day. Lay down, go to sleep, wake up. Go, 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 go all day. Lay down, go to sleep, wake up. Man, God, it was, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. I loved it. I really did. And then we went to Mississippi, right? Boot camp was over. I went to Great Lakes uh, for boot camp. I went to Meridian, Mississippi. I was what they call an AK. That's why my email address is AK Hoops. It's my Navy rating. I made that email address back in two, 2003, 2002, something like that. I don't know. But anyway, so I was an AK aviation storekeeper where, you know, I went to Meridian, Mississippi for A school and man. I mean, it was another blast, right? I was living in a dorm room on my own, hanging out with other guys and girls. You know, I had my car there, going out, doing different things on the weekends. I had money in my pocket. I mean, it was it was literally the best freaking, I don't know, man. It was good every single day. Absolutely loved it. Then we went out for orders. They gave me orders to... An F-14 Tomcat squadron? Man, I was working around planes every day that were literally in the movie Top Gun. Are you kidding me? Like, as a 20-year-old kid that came from absolutely nothing that was going, I guess, somewhere, because here I am, but had the potential to go nowhere. Like, this was amazing, right? I go to boot camp, I go to A school, I get assigned to VF-103, the Jolly Rogers in, in Virginia Beach. Virginia Beach, so I'm going to Virginia Beach, right? I come home and, uh, you know, hang out for two weeks. I go to Virginia Beach. My squadron had just left on the USS George Washington. They had just left. I just missed them, thankfully, because some cool stuff happened because I missed them. So I hung out on base for a couple weeks. They, I'm sweeping, cleaning, moving stuff, just doing goofy things to keep me busy. And then they put me on a plane. They sent me to New York. From New York, they flew me to Rome. Dude, I've been in the Navy seven months. I'm in freaking Rome. Come on. What the hell is happening in my life? So I'm in Rome. In Rome, I get on a plane. I land in Sicily. In Sicily, I get on a COD, carrier onboard delivery. This is a plane that carries cargo on and off an aircraft carrier. And dude, literally, February, March, April, May, June right? July. In July, June, middle of June, end of June, I literally land on an aircraft carrier. Boom. Land. They turn this sucker around. The door drops down. I see the ocean. The boat is rolling. All these guys with these masks on and these different colored shirts are there. Dude, it's just like the Discovery Channel. It's just like the Discovery Channel. It's the wildest thing ever, man. I'm like living on the TV. <laughs> so they get you off the plane real quick because, you know, you don't know nothing. They don't want you to fall over in the ocean. So they get you on. They call you down to check in. And literally, my 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 third big decision to, to sacrifice and give up in order to level up in my life, the first one of my 20s, now I find myself on an aircraft carrier in the middle <laughs> of an ocean right of the mediterranean sea 
like, okay, they check you in and now they're bringing me down to my rack and I got to learn this ship and a man overboard station and, you know, what's this life raft and here's where you work and here's where you eat and here's where you sleep and now you're sleeping on a rack on a ship in the middle of the ocean that's got bombs and weapons and planes and or, dude, it was wild. It was wild, you know, and that was the first three years. And, um, you know, then after that, I had met Alicia. We weren't married yet, but I had met Alicia. And uh, I met her in Virginia Beach. And she was going back home in North Carolina to live. And, and she had finished school in Virginia and was going back home. And, yeah, so I took orders to go to Virginia Beach. Or not Virginia Beach. I was in Virginia Beach. And I took orders to go to North Carolina. I was going to go home to Florida, do recruiting for three years. Thank God I didn't. God has a plan, boy. Because if I'd have went home as a 23-year-old, right, I wasn't ready. I was still in that mindset of hang out with the same people, do the same thing. You know, I didn't do those things when I went home on leave. But if I would have been there every day, if it would have been in my face as a younger person every day at 23 years old, I'm not sure I would have had the willpower not to hang out with the same dumb people. So I didn't. I went to North Carolina. I made a change based off a gut feeling and truthfully to follow a girl, right? Um, because if it didn't work out, I could be a single sailor anywhere in the world and survive. But if it did great. Now let's spend a couple years trying to get to know her family and let's move on. And that's exactly what happened. It worked out, you know, and, and, you know, so I made, I was good in the Navy, man. I made E4 first time up, right? I'm a year in the Navy. I took the test for E4, third class petty officer, first time up, I made it. You know, then a year later you get to take the test for, for second class and I made it right. I'm, I'm two years in the Navy and I'm an E5. I'm loving it, man. I, 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 I was just thriving in that environment. High power, fast paced, get promoted, take a test, you know, level up. It was like, what do you got for me next? What do you got for me next? So I was two years in as an E5 in the Navy and I'm headed to recruiting and I end up in a place called Spartanburg, South Carolina. <laughs> And uh, my family, uh, Alicia, was from there. She was from Kings Mountain, North Carolina. And, um, you know, so she was from that area, familiar with that area. Her family was in that area. Uh, they were all very familiar with the place, except for me, right? I'm, I'm now again in a new area, right? Except this time, everybody's like, hey, how you doing, you know? But it was great. Another good three-year period, some ups and downs. Man, I had to learn a lot. I had to learn how to level up. I had to let go. I don't even want to call this sacrifice, but I had to let go of a younger life, of a younger mindset in order to be a good husband, in order to be a good father, right? Because I was instantly, basically a husband and a father overnight. I went from Virginia Beach living single to North Carolina living with Alicia and Jesse. Bruh. You know, so I had to learn some things. But sacrifice to level up. You know, so now I'm I'm an E5 in the Navy and I'm in recruiting. Right? I'm in recruiting. So this is my first real interaction with people in a sales environment that's not on a phone. As a kid, I was a telemarketer all the time. I was good at that. I mean, anything I can talk and do, I'm pretty good at. When you talk about finding your gifts, when you say, what gifts did God give you? For me, it's organization, team building, and speaking. The older I get, the more I understand that and I learn how to channel that, right? So anyways, recruiting was amazing, man. I had an opportunity for the first time to learn that I love working with kids, right? I love working with kids. It was the first time I had an opportunity to learn that I love changing lives, I do, right? Sitting there talking to somebody. Hey, guy, what's your name? Oh, okay, cool, man. What do you got going on? Nothing? You're not really how okay. You are working? All right, cool. You got, you're got. going to school? Cool, man. Well, what is your plan moving forward? Not really sure. Okay, well, let me talk to you about the United States Navy. 
did you know that X, Y, Z and X, Y, Z and you know how we can help you do this, this and that. Man, it was, it was just absolutely amazing. And you know, there's people that are on my page now 15, 20 years later that are still in the Navy that I put in the Navy that now have husbands, wives, kids, lives, boats, houses, you know, and have gone through struggles and ups and downs and seen crazy things in the military. But it was the first time that I had an opportunity to really learn that I love to speak and talk and mentor and teach. See, the Navy made you mentor. The Navy gave you no choice, especially in recruiting, to be a mentor because when a kid joins the Navy, at least in the time that I was recruiting, they were sometimes in what they call the delayed entry program up to a year. So you literally had to teach, develop, mentor, train, and get with these kids. You had to, because otherwise they would get off track. They would go do other things. They would get in trouble. They would get stupid. They would hang out at parties. They would decide to do something else in their life that most times was disruptive. So you had to mentor them. It was it was designed that way. You had to talk to them, you know, X amount of times a week. You had to see them X amount of times a month. You had to develop them. You had to get them together as groups. You had to do all of these things to mentor, lead, and develop them. You had to help lead their journey to get them where they needed to be. You know, Navy used to have an old slogan, let the journey begin. Yeah, that's what we're about to do. Ha, <laughs> come on. So anyways, recruiting for me was immensely fun. It was a really good time. You know, 2005, I'm the Navy Recruiting District Atlanta Recruiter of the Year. I put more contracts in, more kids in the Navy, adults, people, just people in general, in 2005 in the whole state of South Carolina and Georgia than anyone else. <laughs> Bala, Shakala, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. And because of that, I got meritoriously promoted to E6. So now I'm five and a half years in the Navy. I'm an E6. I mean, things just were rolling quickly, taking on a lot of responsibility, doing a lot of different things. And um, sacrifices being made to level up along the way. You know, fast forward that seven years and six tries to make chief petty officer later, you know, that's where the Navy got me, kind of where I got myself. You know, I made E5 or E6 so quick, six times and six no's later, that's where I had to learn humility. That's where I had to learn humbleness. That's where I had to sacrifice even more to learn more, do more, gain more, get more, fight through the no's. I had to sacrifice personal time, personal things that I wanted to do. I had to sacrifice again these birthdays, holidays, Thanksgivings, Christmases, I had to tell my wife, babe, I can't continue to be told no. I got to figure out what it is I need to do and what these people need to see from me and what the world's energy needs to be for me to go get it. And we made a plan and we executed and I continued to learn. Every no was a notch in the belt. Okay, did this, level up, boom, boom. Okay, did this, level up, boom, boom. Let's make a song out of it. Right? So I did every single time. I analyzed, I sought out mentorship, I worked hard, I said, why, why not? Why, okay, then, okay, it's this year. Nope, not this year. Okay, it's this year. Nope, not this year. Gotta do more, gotta do more. More hours, more contracts, more this, more that. Gotta go back to school and get a bachelor's degree. You're wanting to be a leader and all you have is a technical a G, a degree and a GED. And maybe in most situations that does, it doesn't matter. But in the military at the time, and still at the time, a bachelor's degree puts you one notch above another guy. Boom, let's go get it. Get the smart transcript, download everything, have everything evaluated, get all the credits I need to get. Okay, wow, I'm already halfway in with everything that I've done. Now I just gotta go take, I don't know what it was, 30 classes or 30 credits or 60 credits, whatever half of a batch, 60 credits, because I had 60, it's 120 to get it. It's been a while. So now I'm already halfway to it, boom, go get the bachelor's degree. Guess what? Still no, still no, still no. Okay, let's work on the master's degree. Now we're getting credits. Boom, try number seven, when all hope was lost and everything had been sacrificed and we were at our wits end. Congratulations. 
You are now a Chief Petty Officer in the United States Navy. 13 years of sacrifice, hard work, being told no, you know, ramping up quickly, slowing down, getting humble, learning, gaining experience, growing, gaining, growing, gaining, growing, gaining, called maturity, right? So after seven no's and growing and gaining and learning and gaining, right, after taking all of those losses, making all of that sacrifice, listening to everyone saying you're probably not going to make it, but punching no in the face and telling it to literally get behind me, bruh, 2013, here we are. We make the rank of chief petty officer. Now it's a whole new level. Now it's a whole, you know, you're like, ah, oh, all this sacrifice. I got what I wanted. Guess what, bro? Congratulations. You're here now. Your sacrifice hasn't even begun. You've leveled up to where you thought you wanted to be. You're there now. Hello. Congratulations. Here's your reward. More leadership, more pressure, more hard work, better people, better this, better that, all of this other responsibility around you. Now you're there. Now you have witness to what the next level looks like and the level you're at now doesn't look like it's exactly where you want to be. So now more sacrifice comes in. Whew. And we got to start working towards that next level. And now the objective is to pull everybody else up that you're with at this level and say, latch on because we're about to go. And you latch on to that one and you latch on to that one and let's all latch on together because we're about to go. And yeah, it's going to require sacrifice. And those that can't sacrifice, well, they will fall off the chain and you will grab the arm of another person who continues to understand sacrifice and level up. Man, I'm telling you. Then fast forward three more years, 2015, I was forced with a level up decision. Hey chief, now the only thing that you can do, we know you're in New York, we know you're in Florida, we know you're in South Carolina, we know you've been on this coast and everything that you have is attached to this. But guess what, for your last tour and a half, Okay, mind you, 16 years in the Navy at this point, what are you willing to sacrifice to level up? And what is your interpretation of level up? Because my whole life I had chose to level up career-wise, right? Got to move here in order to get this. Got to take these orders in order to get that. Got to take these orders in order to get that. In order to do all of this in order to level up, right? Well, now I'm faced with the challenge in 2015, this Navy that did so great for me now comes to me and says, guess what, bro? You can only have orders away from everything you know in order to finish. You have to sacrifice one more time. So my options are this Navy that we've been talking about for the last 20 minutes that absolutely changed and revolutionized my life. I'm now 16 years in the Navy. I've got a bachelor's degree. I'm working on a master's degree. I've been married, you know, for 12 years at this point. My kids are are, are young. We're, we're rolling. We're, we've got a home. We're established. I'm making great money. Things are rolling, right? And they say, mm, chief, leader, you can go to the West Coast. You can go to San Diego. You can go to San Jose. You can go to Arizona, right? So my choices are, root my daughter who's just getting ready to go to high school and replant her chasing a scholarship and we could have done it out there it would have been fine right but most likely to a school out there 85 percent of kids go to school in the environment that they grow up in or at least the regional area right my son had great relationships with family my wife was just finishing school and had a teaching license in this state which would require her to get a license in another state everything that I needed to sacrifice was dwindling and everything that they had to start sacrifice was growing. So now what's the sacrifice? I literally sacrificed the job that gave me the life to where I was. And it's 16 years, four years away, five years away from retiring which would have been four years ago now today, right? I walked away. I gave the Navy a high five. I said, thanks for your time. Permission to go ashore. I'm walking away. 
And I did. I walked away with a high five and a handshake. And most guys didn't even give me the handshake because they were pissed off that I made a decision for my life. That I chose to sacrifice. Right? Everybody said, you're crazy. You're going to give up a retirement. You're going to give up this. You're going to give up that. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. Whew. And on the other end, I'm like, I'm going to give up fatherhood. I'm going to give up husbandry. I'm going to make them sacrifice for little old me. Haven't they been doing that? Hasn't everybody been sacrificing for my career, for what I want to do, for where we're going, for what? Isn't it time for me to now sacrifice to be a better father, to be a better husband, sacrifice what I'm doing to be a better support system? Man, and I did, and damn, that was hard. Okay. But I did. And now here we are. It's nine years later. Nine years later. You know? Nine years later that I got out of the Navy and 24 years ago I should have joined the Navy. And it's been full of sacrifice. Sacrifice tours. Sacrifice where you go. Sacrifice my family has sacrificed. Sacrifice seeing me. Deployments. You know, my wife has sacrificed immensely, leaving, moving, changing, being with her family, being without her family, seeing, it's just been, but the point and the annotation and the commentary and the, and the point of this talk is change is sacrifice and leveling up is sacrifice and doing the things that you want to do in your life is sacrifice. Whether it's sacrificing little things, major things, big things, small things, creating consistency in your life and moving positive in a positive direction, those are the things that we're trying to do. Those are the things that we're looking forward to. And every time you try to move forward, you're going to have to have some kind of sacrifice. It's kind of the way it works. So anyways, man, good morning. That's my talk today. I hope y'all have a great day. My leadership series, February 8th. 24 years ago, I joined the Navy. It says, are you willing to give up to go up? I like this book. I like the message that God is sending to me, man. Yesterday, it was right on time with, you know, people had the most value in their strength zones, linking up with others the day before and now sacrifice. I'm telling you, man, you can't do nothing without giving up something. Yin and yang, right? Positive, negative, right? Yeah, it's just... Nature don't lie. So enjoy your day. It's Thursday. Change somebody today. Change somebody around you. Make an impact today. Talk to somebody today. If you need help doing anything, call me. 72704. Jeez, I'm giving my, my phone, my work number. 704-807-5663. Give me a chat. Let's talk, man. Lots of good things coming up in 24, man. We're, we're five, six weeks in. Right, continue to move forward, continue to press, continue to work on you. Write down your goals, write down your systems and processes, have a form of accountability. And if you need help leading your journey, man, call me. We all need a little bit of guidance. Even the coach needs a coach. Hope y'all have a great day. Happy Thursday. Hoops out.